you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Be gone with you. <laughs> Hello everyone, after covering Hammer's Frankenstein movies, now we are heading to the second most important part of the Hammer movies, the Hammer Dracula series. After Hammer's success with Curse of Frankenstein, Hammer decided, let's do Dracula next. And once again, to avoid getting sued by Universal, they made it their own to not copy what was already done in the Lugosi version. And instead of calling it Dracula on its own, they changed the title. But in the UK, this movie is called Dracula. When the US distributed the movie, they retitled it Horror of Dracula to avoid confusion with modern audiences because people still thought of the Bela Lugosi's Universal Dracula was iconic at the time until Hammer's version of Dracula. It was the first time a Dracula movie was shot in color. Fresh off with the success of Curse of Frankenstein, it was once again directed by Terence Fisher. It was also written by Jimmy Sangster, who also wrote Curse of Frankenstein. Even though I love the Universal Bela Lugosi Dracula movie, out of all the other Dracula movie adaptations, this is probably the best one of them all. But at the same time, it's not 100% truthful and faithful to the Bram Stoker's novel. But this to me is as close as you get, especially for the time back in the 1950s, this was considered almost faithful to Dracula movie to the novel. I said this before in my Nosferatu review, that I never read the uh, Bram Stoker Dracula novel, but I'm familiar with and done research on watching YouTube videos on the differences between the Dracula movies and the novel by Bram Stoker. It's one of those things, if you never read the book, you know about Dracula and vampire lore culture, especially in today's modern world of social media. In the Lugosi Universal Dracula, they did not add the sexual subtext scenes in this, they use that, how Dracula is sexually frustrated, never being satisfied, and feeling alone. In 2015, when I got into watching the uh, Hammer Horror movies, thanks to my friends, after watching Curse of Frankenstein, I watched Horror of Dracula next. It did not disappoint me at all. Peter Cushing plays Van Helsing. Unlike Edward Von Sloan in the Universal Dracula, he was an old man. In this movie, Van Helsing is a little bit younger. Don't get me wrong, Edward Von Sloan was a good Van Helsing, but there's something about Peter Cushing as Van Helsing that is much more appealing to me. They don't determine how old he is in this movie, but my guess is that Van Helsing might be in his late 30s or 40s, but I could be wrong on that one. Van Helsing is a smart guy, a gentleman, a soft side, humanized, good with kids. I love when he comforts and shows compassion to the little girl after being afraid of Lucy, after almost being bitten by her, being turned into a vampire. Van Helsing tells the little girl to watch the sun rise and wraps her in a fur coat saying, Look like a teddy bear. He's one of the best actors to have played Van Helsing ever, period. But it's crazy how watching Peter Cushing in this movie and Curse of Frankenstein back to back, he plays a crazy, evil, mean, ruthless, mad scientist in the Frankenstein Hammer movies and in Dracula movies. He's very heroic, a likable guy, a gentleman as Van Helsing. In some ways, it's one of those where Cushing is not acting because in real life, Peter Cushing was a very nice guy and a gentleman in real life. At first, he is hesitant to kill his friend, Jonathan Harker, but he had no choice because he was a possessed vampire. Christopher Lee is Dracula. Bela Lugosi was hypnotic as Dracula. Christopher Lee's drag is a little bit more gore and cannibalistic. Despite not having a lot of dial in this movie, he still does an excellent job. Even though having a lot of dialogue as Dracula, Lee is still scary and terrifying. You can make the argument debate who's more iconic in the role as Dracula, Christopher Lee or Bela Lugosi. The opening scene we are first introduced to Count Dracula, it's like how in Psycho we are first introduced to Norman Bates. He seems like a nice humble guy and a gentleman, the same with Dracula. Dracula is kind of helping Jonathan Harker settling in when he arrives at the castle. But once one of his wives asks Harker for help and escape from Dracula, Dracula unleashes his full beast mode on Jonathan Harker. In past Dracula movies, Dracula turns into a bat 
and this movie doesn't turn into a bad at all. In the Lugosi Dracula movie, travels by boat to England, this movie doesn't do that. Instead, either he just walks or travels by stagecoach. They don't explain or show how he got to London. I read that when Christopher Lee played Dracula, he had a theory that Dracula was a lonely man, does not want to survive, but he had no choice. And I guess he was also going for that Dracula was misunderstood. All he wanted was someone to love him for all of eternity and someone to connect with. This was the first movie for both Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing to receive top billing. Unlike Bill Lugosi, who played Dracula twice in Dracula 1931 and Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein, Christopher Lee played Dracula a total of ten times. Seven times in the Hammer movies, and three times outside of the Hammer Dracula movies. He's probably the third and only actor I can think of to play Dracula more than once. Heck, maybe he's in the Guinness World Record playing Dracula the most, but I could be wrong on that one. Just like Bela Lugosi, Lon Chaney Jr., and Christopher Lee, they are the only actors who have played Dracula, the Frankenstein Monster, and the Mummy. Christopher Lee played Dracula for a small part in the Sammy Davis Jr. movie, One More Time, Count Dracula 1970, and In Search of Dracula from 1974, but I'm only focused on the Hammer of Dracula movies for now. I friends have mentioned this in my Curse of Frankenstein video. As a little kid watching Star Wars, seeing Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in the Star Wars movies was my intro to them before I knew about their reputation as horror iconic actors. Watching Christopher Lee as Dracula makes me realize and see the connection where George Lucas got the inspiration for the name Count Dooku. Think about it. Dracula, Count Dooku. Yeah, you can tell George Lucas was a fan of the Hammer movies. George Lucas has good taste. These movies are great and awesome. Also, seeing the Lord of the Ring movies, Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow, and the Star Wars prequel trilogy, it was nice to see Peter Jackson, George Lucas, and Tim Burton employ Christopher Lee and introduce younger audiences like myself show how great of an actor he was. Van Helsing and Dracula have no scenes together where they talk and have conversations together. Not like in the Bale Lugosi Universal Dracula. Unlike in the Universal Dracula adaptations, Instead of Renfield, the character's name is Jonathan Harker. Jonathan Harker is a librarian, not a real estate agent. He goes to Dracula's castle because he got a job working for Dracula. In the novel in the Lugosi Dracula movie, Renfield had no idea or even thought that vampires were real or existed. In this movie, Jonathan Harker believes vampires are real and knows that Dracula is a vampire, which also makes him a vampire hunter. After the opening credits, starts off with a monologue of him going on a journey for his new job at Dracula's castle. He misses his fiance, thinks about her while on the trip, and he can't wait to marry her. Jonathan Harker meets one of Dracula's wives, played by Valerie Gaunt, who played the maid Justine in Curse of Frankenstein. Again, sorry for repeating myself and said this already in the Curse of Frankenstein video. Valerie Gaunt was such a beautiful woman. Too bad this is her last movie. She was mostly known for her work in the theater. It's too bad she did not have a long career in Hollywood movies. She seemed like an actress who had potential to be in other Hammer movies. She tells Jonathan how mean and abusive Dracula is and how she can go with him. This part is a metaphor for abusive relationships. Dracula defeats Harker and he becomes a vampire. Jonathan Harker wakes up, tries to find and kill Dracula but he waits too long and he is too late. His big mistake was killing Valerie Gaunt first, he should have killed Dracula first, then he would have been free of the vampire curse. In the book, Harker doesn't become a vampire, he's hypnotized by Dracula, and he lives up until the end of the novel. Also, in the Bale Lugosi Dracula movie, Renfield played by Dwight Fry stole the show despite that he was not the main monster star, he was a side character. We see how he's in the mental institution after being found on a boat. They are trying to help Renfield, but he doesn't want to be helped or be cured. He was trying to keep his word for Dracula to show how he was very loyal to him. In this movie, Harker dies early in the movie, that's it for his character. Michael Gaw plays Arthur Holmwood. You all might recognize Michael Gaw who played Alfred in the Tim Burton slash Joel Schumacher Batman movies. 
And this movie's character is skeptical and not sure if he believes in the supernatural vampires. I like it when he finally believes in Van Helsing. They develop a friendship, mutual respect for one another. He was hesitant to kill his sister. Van Helsing tells him that the Lucy that he once knew is gone, that her trust has been lost. That's why Van Helsing kills Lucy for him, to do his dirty work. Arthur was scared, guilty to kill his own sister. In a way, there's a little bit of incest when Lucy almost tried to kill Arthur, when you think about it. Once again, another change up to the novel in the Lugosi Universal Dracula changed up the relationship status on Mina and Lucy. Mina was engaged to Jonathan in Dracula 1931. Lucy was not married or engaged to anyone in the Lugosi Dracula movie. Lucy was engaged to Harker in this movie. They don't mention if Lucy had any siblings in the uh, Dracula 1931 movie. Mina is married to Arthur. Mina was not married yet in Dracula 1931. I'll admit, I'm probably not the best at explaining the differences in the uh, Dracula novel and other Dracula movie adaptations, but I tried and did my best. This is probably Hammer's best soundtrack. I love the opening visual shots of Blood Splatter, Gothic Castle, Gargoyle Statues, and a Fog Cemetery. Anytime I think of James Bernard Hammer's score, this is the first one that comes to mind. It's done so well and perfect because that's the tone of the rest of the movie. Despite this movie breaks the rules and not following the Dracula novel, this movie is still great and still works out very well. In the Universal Dracula ending where Van Helsing stabs Dracula in his coffin, this Dracula ending version was better. I love the final showdown this movie between good versus evil. When Dracula and Van Helsing fight, Dracula is choking Van Helsing fakes being dead you rumor him to get out of it, gets back up, jumps up on the table, takes the drapes down, killing Dracula by sunlight, and uses two candlesticks, making a cross symbol, destroying Dracula. Dracula disintegrates into dust. Van Helsing is disgusted, but had to do what needed to be done in order to kill Dracula and break the vampire curse. I understand there is lost footage of how the special effects were done when Dracula decomposes, that they found the footage, but it's only in Japan. Hopefully someday they can work out a deal and restore the missing ending on this movie. But you can go on YouTube and see the missing footage. From what I've seen, it's pretty cool and awesome special effects of Dracula turning to dust when he's killed by Van Helsing. Horror Dragon is another excellent great Hammer movie that reinvented the horror genre. That was my review of Horror of Dracula. Tomorrow we'll dive into The Brides of Dracula. Stay tuned.